Morning, YouTubers. I'm back and back with Imagine That, another stick welding video. This time, though, I think it's going to be more relevant to what you guys actually do and less about uh, stuff that like the basics, I guess, even though this is a basic video. So today we're going to be running 7018, 332, uphill, so vertical up, and I got a piece of 3 8 uh, angle iron. Now I'm a big proponent of reusing scrap you have laying around rather than burning up new metal, especially with the prices of this stuff, like gold around here. So I found this in a scrap bin and thought, well, this would be perfect to start learning 7018 uphill. Now I already have a video about welding uphill with stick and I'll admit it, fully admit it, not the best uphill stick welding video for learning simply because, well, I don't, I'm not really that good at 6013 uphill and that's what I used in the video. So the welds weren't the greatest and you know, it's just, I'm telling you, it's a hard rod to run uphill. 7018, so much easier, much easier. So that's why we're gonna do that today. I'm gonna focus more on the fine tunings of 7018 uphill and less of how to weld uphill. So my recommendation before you watch this video is go watch the 6013 uphill video I did or the intro to welding up, stick welding uphill. I'll put a link in the description, but go watch that first, then come back because I'm sure I'm gonna not cover a ton of stuff that was covered in there. So anyways, let's get into it. So here's our test plate. Pretty thick stuff, which is great for practice. Anytime you're running uphill, vertical up and practicing, using a thicker plate and a little bit smaller of a rod, so we're using 332 and really thick plate, will help you because it, it's more forgiving. When you do uphill welding on thinner material, your, your margin of error goes from like this to like you can't even see it. Now I'm gonna put a little video in here talking about hand position because I didn't even really cover that that much in my previous video. So let's watch that now. All right, to give you a little bit of an overview, normally when welding vertical up, I would be standing more than likely and I put my left hand on my workpiece and then I feed the rod in with my right hand, my dominant hand. Now this to get camera angles I'm going to have to sit down like I am now, so it's a little bit different than what you'd probably find on a job site. <laughs> they generally don't pay you to sit, right? But anyways, what you want to concern yourself with is, I run my rod that angle. And the reason is, is that if I keep my forearm and my wrist essentially on the same plane and just feed it in by pushing my wrist slightly up, it's very easy to, to feed in smoothly. I see a lot of guys where they'll chuck their rod like this and then they like lift their whole arm like this, like they're doing a bicep curl or something. And the issue with doing that is not only do you have to lift your wrist, but you also have to bring the stinger closer. So you're essentially doing this whole movement like this. There's a lot of uh, difficulty in holding a tight arc gap when you're adjusting that many things. So simply by chucking it in a rod like this, keeping your forearm essentially like it's almost la locked into a rail track and just pushing at a slight upward angle, it's very easy to control this and keep your, your elbow close to your body it's much easier to keep steady like this. Like if I'll back up a little bit just to show, hopefully this shows up. Watch how steady I can keep the tip of the rod. Now it's gonna move a little bit, but I can feed it out pretty good. Now if I really lock it down to my side, not hard, but I can just feed it out there. Now if I'm doing like this, where I have to bring it down here, I'm telling you, it's much harder. You might not see it in the video. It's much harder to manipulate it that way. So do like I said at first, at least to try and see if you can dial it in that way. Trust me, it's so much easier with a hand on the metal like this and just feeding it in under control. All right, hopefully you got at least a, an idea of how to position your hands to do this kind of stuff. 
Um, hopefully that helped you. So anyways, uh, I'm going to get the rod chucked up in the stinger. So I'm all ready to go. I got my hand positioned somewhat like what I had before. Now, because I'm sitting, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I'm probably going to do any number of things to try and run a straight bead. It will help you to do the soapstone like I did here to try and keep a straight line because it can be very difficult to see where you are. Also, it may help you if you run a straight bead while it's in a flat position and then use that as a guide to weld or to weld on when you want to practice overlapping. But with that said, let's uh, run a rod and see what we got. All right, I got a phone call, so I had to cut it out there for a second, but let's take a look at what I got here. Now, this is nowhere near hot because obviously I can touch it, so it's been a little bit. Now, when you run 7018 uphill, like with most rods, this looks pretty rough, right? Well, that has a lot to do with just the way that the flux uh, kind of drips on it, but ideally, it's the flux, not the metal. There you go, that's pretty clean. Let me zoom in for you guys here. Enhance. <laughs> so we can see the end of this. My travel speed at the start was a little bit too high probably. And not only that, got a little bit of a drip on it. And it's not really a drip, it's just that where I held my rod here and then moved, it just kind of hung down a little bit. Not a big deal, pretty typical. The next rod will do better. Now, you see up here too, when I broke off the arc, what I should have done is I should have let it fill a little bit more up over the edge, and essentially I have kind of like undercut there. See where it kind of chewed away? So my next pass, I'm gonna bring the rod up and let it deposit it right on the top of there a little better. But overall, Looking pretty good. I mean, this is pretty consistent in width and height. Much easier to run, like I said, uphill than 6013. You're really looking for the same puddle uh, with the 7018 on uphill as you do on flat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a welding lens on the camera, and then we're going to weld uphill with it so you can see it with some arc footage. So I have a bunch of arc footage for you guys. Now this uh, particular run, the rod was a little bit hard to keep running at the start. The amperage was a little bit low, but once I got it going, it ran good. Now if you watch there, the arc gap is pretty tight. The molten puddle is about twice the length of the, that the rod is wide, so somewhere around a quarter inch. It's the brighter orange part. A little difficult to see in this one, but I'm slowly pulling that eye or pushing it uphill. Now you can see once the flux pops off of here, it's a little bit inconsistent, so not the same height and width, but not really too bad. There's room for improvement, which we'll work on that next. All right, I'm gonna do a bunch of welds back to back and just comment as we go. So this is a little bit dark to see, but you can kind of see that molten puddle in there a little bit. And you can see I'm not really progressing that fast uphill. You don't want to run so fast that your weld pool necks down and you deposit a real thin roped up weld. Like you got to give it time.
so this is a lot clearer. I struck my arc ahead of where I was welding, and then I'm going to weld through it. The reason being is that I wanted to make sure that the start of the weld was hot and flat and avoid any kind of starting porosity that really works. Now you can see I'm slowly dragging that puddle. It's sort of round shape, about twice the size of the rod is in diameter, so a quarter inch or so, and just slowly drag it uphill, or in this case, I guess a slight push uphill. Now here's another one I started a little bit further ahead, drug it back a little bit, and then I'm slowly just pushing that puddle uphill. Now on thinner plate, it's going to have a tendency to get a lot hotter and a lot more out of control faster than this. You have so much leeway, but you got to start practicing somewhere. That's why I recommend on thicker plate, it's much easier than say trying to do this on eighth inch plate. It also pays, listen to the sound in this video of every clip. You can tell when the arc gap gets longer, the weld appears brighter, the arc appears brighter, and the sound it makes is different. The same thing will happen for you when you're welding. So this one I'm not going to say anything and just let you watch and listen. All right, to cap this video off, let's talk about uh, what we learned today. So the first thing is, is that obviously your hand position, how you're feeding it in, huge matters of so much. Because if you can't keep that tip of that rod steady and nice and smooth upward progression, your weld is going to come out rough and you're just not going to be able to control that molten puddle which fortunately with 7018, it's pretty easy to see the puddle. And honestly, I don't even really pay attention to the puddle that much. One of the things you guys are going to learn as you get better at stick welding and welding in general, stick and TIG primarily this works for is the amount of light that comes out of it as you're welding tells you everything you need to know. Like when I'm welding this, oftentimes the puddle that's below the rod is obscured by the rod itself. It's not like you want to put this above your head to where you can see underneath the rod. You know what I'm saying? Like here, like I'm not staring down here. The rod is obscuring it. So what I'm looking at is the amount of light that's produced around this area. And as I slowly drag that up and keep that tight arc, that's all I go by is really the amount of light. I mean, I can see the edges of the puddle for sure around the rod, but that's really what I'm paying attention to. TIG's the same way. Like your light output tells you what your arc gap is. If your arc gap's super tight, and if you rewatch the this video, the arc shots, you'll see as the arc is tight, there's very minimal light output. As it lengthens, the screen brightens. Same thing in real time as you're watching it. So, you know, you want to keep that tight arc. You want to keep, keep the rod shoved in there. You want to progress slowly to avoid the undercut on the top, which I did a pretty good job. You want to hold the rod and then bring it up and just let it fill for a little bit. 
Now most of these I ran at about 80 amps, which is pretty cold for this 3 8 plate. I could have easily ran 90 amps on it and I would have liked the results better. Most of these are not humped up, but there's, they're definitely not wetted out. So could have ran more amperage. Now on thinner plate, you're not gonna be able to run 90 amps and not blow a hole. So yeah, other than that, I would say that uh, you just need to practice to get good at this. I can't stress enough. Like this is, uh, this box here, I think it's a 10 pound box or five pounds, five pounds. You need to burn about four to five of these on vertical up on a piece of plate like this, just constantly. By the time you burn up that many of them and have restarts and tie-ins all the whole nine yards on it, you will be having this down better than you ever have. You'll be really good at it. If after every weld you ask, huh, what can I do better? And you play with settings, a little too much amperage, a little too little. It's to become a good welder with, especially with uphill stick, you have to practice and you have to make mistakes. Don't be afraid of mistakes. You know, set it too hot, set it too cold, do everything. By the time you get to the end of this, both sides and that whole box, and four more like it ran, you'll be doing real good. So get out there and practice, you know. So anyways, you guys have a good night, um, and until next time.